So here's my uh, Yashica Mat 124G, and uh, it's pretty cool. It's a nice little heavy size, uh, nice and light and compact for a medium format camera. Uh, pretty cool uh, form factor with the twin lens reflex style camera, um, which what that means, if you're not familiar with these old dudes, um, the top lens is actually what you look through when you're composing your photo through the viewfinder here on top. And the bottom lens is the lens that takes the photo and actually puts it onto the film. Uh, with this camera, the bottom lens is a Yashinon 80mm f3.5. Um, so with the 80mm focal length, you end up with really similar to a 50mm on a 35mm or full frame digital camera uh, if you're comparing kind of a like to like. This also came with a little filter on it from the guy I bought it from which I don't know if it makes much difference or not but so far it looks good so I didn't have a reason to try changing it too much. Um, yeah that 50mm full frame equivalent length it's really nice when you're just walking around uh, and you just want to bring this with you to take photos. It's got a super quiet shutter um, and like I said it's light and compact and you kind of can just walk around and look through it. Um, it's pretty quick to take fo photos with as well. The focus knobs here on the side and it's kind of a bellows style focusing so you can really go. This is uh, full close with the front end all the way up. All the way back here is infinity. So it's pretty nice and easy to focus and look through. Um, so if you're wondering what everything does on it, this is your shutter release down here and the shutter locking lever. So like this I could fire and take a photo. And like this it's locked and I can't depress the shutter release. Um, so if you come down here, this little red deal, we've got a self timer here. It's supposed to be up to 5 seconds uh, or 10 seconds. 10 seconds I think. So if you set that you can get 10 second self timer on it. Uh, this little yellow button here is a sink for flash. It has a cold shoe here on the side where a flash would have gone probably a handle um, that plugs in and you can sink the flash. Uh, I've never messed with that. And then over here on this side we have the shutter speed. So we go from uh, 1 to 500th of a second um, all the way down to 1 second and it's got a bulb mode so it's pretty versatile for an older TLR camera. Uh, on this side, this little knob here is our aperture adjustment. So we can go from f3.5 all the way up to f32. So it's also got a good range of apertures for nice shallow depth of field or uh, closing it way down for whatever your purposes may be. Um, up here is the input for the light meter. Uh, I've, if you noticed, I taped my film label over mine there because uh, my battery is dead in this and I've not ordered a new one to try it out yet, which I really ought to do, but I mostly meter with my A7 I'm filming on now or with an app on my cell phone. I've had really good results so far doing that. Um, but yeah, if you do buy one of these and the meter doesn't work, the battery compartment is this small lid right here and it just screws off, sometimes easier than others. Uh, <clears throat> and that's probably where I would start checking out the meter if you have one that's inoperative. Um, like I said, this is the focus knob over here. Uh, these two little knobs are for loading your spools on your film. Um, my camera is loaded and I'm sitting on the third frame right now so I'm not going to open this up and expose all of my film but uh, if there is some interest in wanting to know how to load these cameras uh, I will make another video on that. Um, we'll jump to the bottom speaking of loading them. It's got these little feet to stand on so it sits pretty level. I don't, sometimes it's kind of nice so you can make a tripod out of stuff easier. It does have quarter 20 tripod mount in the bottom. And this wheel here is how you actually lock and unlock the compartment to load your film. Uh, so when it comes to the viewfinder, all you do is open that thing up like that. Um, 
it's nice and clear, easy to look through, love looking through it. Uh, if you've ever messed with these, you know it's backwards. Uh, everything's kind of a mirrored effect. So it does take a little bit to get used to composing in it, but it's awesome when you do. Um, so right here on the front where this little Y is, if you push on that, it pops out a little magnifying glass. So when you need to really critically focus, it's pretty nice. Um, and then to put it back away, you just push it back down and then you can close your viewfinder. Um, another thing I've never used, they call it a sports finder. You can push this all the way down and then there's a little cutout back here on the back. And I guess if you were shooting at infinity and you had everything preset and you wanted to do a uh, panning shot, that would make that a lot easier. Um, however, I'm not sure. I never tried messing with that. To uh, get the front back up, there's a little silver tab back here. You press that in. And... What do I say you do? There we go. And the front flops back up. You push your magnifying glass down, close the viewfinder, and ready to walk around again. Um, I think the only thing I haven't covered so far is just this side of the camera. Uh, this is your film advance. You just fold it out, crank it around until it stops and shows you your next frame. And then you go back a half a turn and it sits in there out of the way where you're less likely to break it off hopefully. Uh, just pretty nifty. Uh, right here's your window. It shows you if you've got 120 or 220 film loaded. Uh, right here's your exposure counter. And yeah, that's about all it is. It's a really simple, fun to use camera. Uh, I've gotten really good results out of it, in my opinion. I'm really happy that I purchased this thing. Um, so yeah, if you want, we will jump over to the laptop. We'll check out some photo examples from it and see what you guys think. Um, yeah, that's the easy part. I'm real happy with the camera and we'll see what you guys think of the photo samples. Let's do that. Alright guys, so we're back here at the laptop now and uh, I just wanted to show you a few of the photo samples from my Yashica Mat 124G and uh, you know, I've not had the camera terribly long yet so this is kind of like a first impressions review I guess. Um, I've only shot maybe two or three, three or four rolls of film through it. Um, so these samples are just going to be from the most recent two film rolls that I've had developed. Uh, one uh, color film is Ektar 100 that I shot mostly over in Arkansas. And then the uh, next roll is going to be some Kodak T-Max 400, I believe, um, so for black and white film. So I'll show you a little bit of both here and see what you guys think. Um, like I said, I've been pretty happy with it and pretty impressed. Um, this first shot here is some of the Ektar 100 from Arkansas. And this is a uh, old Catholic church in Eureka Springs. Oops. And uh, I love the way the Ektar renders all the fall colors. It was a really good choice for fall. Um, just happened to decide to try it and really happy that I did that day. But as you can see here, the photo is pretty sharp. I like the way the Yeshanon lens renders everything. Um, this was probably at a smaller f-stop like 11 or 16. So the depth of field here is pretty deep. Uh, this one, on the other hand, is exactly the opposite. It was at 3.5, uh, f-stop of 3.5. This is my wife, Cassie, uh, in Eureka Springs. She, uh, we found this little staircase in the middle of town that just went up and had a little seating area, so I had her pose for some photos. Um, but you can see at 3.5, the depth of field is quite shallow. Um, renders really nice out-of-focus areas. I really like the bokeh of it. Um, the colors again of the Ektar were awesome for fall. I'm pretty pretty happy with it. Uh, this is another one in Eureka Springs and that's probably at a F16 or so. Um, this is just downtown in Eureka Springs. Uh, as you can see on the bricks here, the sharpness looks pretty good and these cars are nice and clean and sharp. Uh, 
even the shadow areas got pretty nice rendering in the ektar with the right exposure. So I'm pretty happy with that. Um, this is down at the White River. Uh, I think I was trying like a 3.5 or f4 on this. So I really kind of wanted to have that shallow depth of field in certain areas. I think I probably missed the focus a little of what I was going for, but the shot still came out kind of neat with all the ektar colors in there. Um, like I said, for the fall foliage stuff, that, that film was a pretty good choice, I think. Uh, this again is on the White River. Uh, probably, I'm not sure, this might have only been like an F8 or something, because the depth of field goes out a little ways, but it starts to get less in focus. I'm not, I can't remember exactly on that. I should have taken some notes, I guess. Now, uh, this is another one at 3.5. Um, I really wanted to blur out these logs here in the front and catch the river and the fall colors in focus uh, with the logs kind of just leading out there and pointing to it. And uh, these are the color ones I wanted to show you, so we'll move over to the black and white photos. Um, this one's at Red Rock Canyon near Hinton, Oklahoma on the T-Max. Um, Again, this was at a pretty wide o open aperture um, with the trail in focus here in the foreground. Now, this was more with a like an F4 or F8 probably aperture. Uh, again, we're nice and sharp. The corners don't look too bad. I think there's a little bit of fall off on sharpness and light in the corners on the Ishika map, but it's not terribly bad or noticeable, and uh, I really like the character the photos have to them. Uh, this is also at Red Rock Canyon again. I uh, thought this tree with the fence leading up to it was really neat looking. Um, this is, if you watch my vlog, you might recognize this is the uh, Overholzer Dam where we were shooting in the vlog a couple videos back. Um, I took this kind of just to show exactly how windy it was. Um, you can see all the white caps in the water and how the uh, lake was just stirring up by the wind. Again, like I said, really nice sharpness for an older camera. Uh, the T-Max, I, I really like the way it renders sharp, clean images. Um, and so far that's the I think it's the only black and white film that I've shot in the... Oh no, I did. I shot some Milford uh, SFX 200 that I'm also pretty happy with in the Yashica map too. Um, but yeah, this T-Max is nice. Uh, this is another one from Red Rock Canyon. Uh, my buddy Quentin and I were up on the cliff here shooting back towards the... down, uh, down in the park here where the road is. Uh, I just thought this whole dead tree would look cool in black and white with all of the hills and everything in the background. Uh, this is my buddy Quentin that I went shooting with that day. I uh, shot this at 3.5, pretty close towards 2 in. Uh, really wanted that blown out background to focus on my friend. But yeah, that's my photo samples. Uh, I hope that gives you some kind of idea of what this camera is capable of. and. Um, I'm still learning to use it the best that I can. Uh, this is my first medium format experience ever. Uh, also my first fully manual camera, I think. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm pretty excited about what I've been able to do with it so far. and Can't wait to see what we can get out of it now with uh, different films and things. I'm still trying out a lot of new film, try to do all that. Uh, back when I shot film all the time, I was pretty young from, uh, you know, eight or nine until 16 or 18 when digital came out and I was just shooting with a little point-and-shoot camera um, Buying whatever Kodak Gold or Kodak Color or Fujifilm was at Walmart, so uh, It's a little different these days uh, For me trying to do it uh, more professionally, I suppose um, But yeah, it's been really fun. I've enjoyed the camera and maybe we'll do a follow-up review in the future when I've had more time with it and more rolls put through it and all of that so uh, I hope you'd enjoyed the video. I hope that I could uh, put a little light on the Yashica Mat 124G for you. 
If you have any questions, please leave them down below in the comments and uh, like and subscribe to the channel. Uh, like the video if that's what you want to do. And uh, yeah, we'll see you next time. Take it easy.